I think I was devastated like everybody else. I mean, although we thought we all knew it was coming, it's so final when it does come, you know, and I always think that when a person who's got more years on them passes away, it's a different sort of grief from when it's uh, somebody uh, younger or somebody at the normal sort of age of passing, because it's such a, a, a link with the past that now is gone forever. You know, that, that someone of that age um, and of that uh, status and uh, of that mental ability had all those memories from close to a hundred years ago is something that is desperately sad to lose. Um, I mean, I think one of my most, uh, uh, my strongest memories of her sitting at the dining room table at lunch at Wimbledon in 2010 when she went there and Roger Federer was just next to her. I was on the other side. There were just uh, eight people on the table and she was com completely with it, with everything, with the sport, with the politics. She was just on a trip to speak at the UN and she was talking about how she hadn't spoken this and she was um, very young and how she believed in certain things. So, so she was so on the ball that it was uh, just remarkable. Roger Federer was absolutely entranced by her. He was the one who was asking all the questions and just, you know, leaning into hearing everything. And we were all a part of it and enjoying this conversation. And I think that was one of the great things about the Queen is that, you know, although she was uh, the most famous woman in the world, she had no airs and graces. I mean, she would be just a regular person and down to earth, motherly, sensible, uh, with a very good sense of humor, could had the confidence to do what she needed to do, but without being arrogant. There was no no arrogance about her at all. Although I believe she didn't stand fools uh, um, easily, you know. So I think she, if uh, if she was if she wasn't pleased, she would probably let people know. I feel totally honored and privileged to have been in a position where I spent, you know, several times in a close uh, proximity with the Queen, because I think anybody who has ever met her will remember that day, whether you were at school, whether you were, she was presenting something at some place and you went by, and I think, and to get a word from her would be incredible, and to, to shake hands with her, and to be linked with her at the final of Wimbledon in 77, was just, you know, as time goes by, it almost gets like even more surreal, that particular uh, incident. And uh, it was just extraordinary. Uh, you know, the Queen has been an icon for so many things and she was like patron of Wimbledon. And so that was always a recognition of her being involved. We all knew her as loving horses, not particularly liking tennis, but, I will remember the as the greatest emotional sporting occasion that I ever experienced. And obviously I wasn't actually there, but I was watching on television was the 1966 uh, uh, World Cup and the Queen was there. So that was absolutely amazing. And then, you know, the Olympics and, uh, and how she came over with the sense of humor and they always managed to, to do those nice things with her. So I think, I think people would have loved her to be their sports uh, icon. I, I, you know, obviously she couldn't spread herself that thin, but through all the sports. But I think uh, she knew that uh, being healthy, being sportive, was a very important part of life. I think she really appreciated anybody uh, British doing well or from the Commonwealth doing well. I think she she was uh, she really rewarded them with her with, uh, what can I say, with her grace, with her, with her bounty. I mean, she was, she was, I think she would have done even more if there were 10 of her. On the contrary, when I heard that the queen was going to be there because uh, as we all know, I'd been, it was something like my 16th Wimbledon and I never had really performed up, up to what I thought was my full potential at Wimbledon. And when I was, uh, heard that she was going to be on the, in, uh, there on the final, on the ladies' final day, 
I, it, it just triggered a destiny in me. Well, I'm going to be there. And uh, I'm, if she's going to be there, I have to win. So I had this job to do that year. I had this destiny to fulfill and she was my motivation. So I had that extra motivation of it being the centenary of Wimbledon and the queen being there. And in any big nervous sporting occasion, the occasion, there was so many nerves, there really are. But the motivation and the determination have to balance out that. And so in this case, it gave me that extra motivation, that extra determination and helped me. So I told him, I mean, at least once or twice afterwards, I have to thank you so much for being there because that was really the main reason that I managed to get to the final and win. You know, the funny thing is that the crowd was going absolutely nuts and they were singing along. They were saying, she's a jolly good fellow, all sorts of things. And and I really couldn't hear her. And I, I thought to myself, I've never, I mean, you know, everything is a little bit of a, a fog or an, an occasion like that. And when you're so ecstatic, you know, but I did think to myself, golly, I can't, can't remember an experience ever like this, except for the World Cup in 1966, where everybody was going absolutely, uh, incredibly apy over the, the success. And so there was a lot of noise going around. So I honestly didn't hear what she said. I had to sort of lip read. I said, excuse me, which was a little embarrassing, but um, it was all right. I mean, one of the great other things was that, you know, we had these nice tennis dresses actually made for us by Ted Tinling. And I had a, a cashmere sweater to go with my outfit, which was in this color of the, the ro um, old rose. And when you walk into the center court and you turn around to curtsy, I saw that the green was dressed in the same color. So that was another very good omen. I, mean, I didn't tell her that. I didn't actually tell her that, but uh, but I felt it. That moment and that confluence of time and that the queen was there and it was her silver jubilee and it was the centenary of Wimbledon and I was there will always be the most memorable event in my life. And it's fun because it gets shown quite often. So you, it's not like you have to dredge your memory to remember so it's quite easy to remember and so many people did remember so uh it's no it was the, the the pinnacle of my sporting life for sure well i i know that the golf was cancelled for the day it was yes um i know that the big games basically i think there should be respect shown for as long as it makes sense so it's difficult. I mean, maybe, you know, it was a fairly heavy day yesterday. So, and I guess uh, the, the day after her passing. So in a way people need to get a little distraction. Um, I, as, as long as it's very respectful, you know, there've been so many ways of uh, showing respect throughout the day yesterday and today that I, I think I think slowly some things can come back and um, let people, they won't forget. It will, it will have a long time of mourning. I think, um, you know, I think people, I think they won't get over it quickly. I, I mean, as I've said, I think that she was such a, warm human being and in an age when everybody is fighting and and it's all changing and it's very hard to be consistent she was somebody who was consistent she was always there nothing changed she was uh, she was what we all need i mean we we all need somebody that we can think that we can always look up to and always have them just there, but a little bit removed. So I, I mind, I, I'll never, she'll always be the queen to me. And, you know, I think her humanity and her sense of humor and the fact that she was so dedicated, uh, all her values were 
absolutely extraordinary. And uh, I think the whole world should reflect on them a little more carefully and see what made her so great. 